Hey everybody, we're gonna call this lesson jump rope number two. I wasn't sure of a name to use, so, so, so since this is our second lesson for jump roping, I'll call it jump rope number two. All right, so what would I wanna teach you this week is just a couple more jump roping skills, maybe a couple of different types of jumps. Uh, um, so we'll con continue the jumping, we'll review some of the jump roping skills, how to hold it, how to make sure we do a nice swim. So we'll cover that and three new jumps. Uh, while we're doing this, I want you to think of some questions. Right? And I always have my papers just to make sure I cover everything. Uh, what makes physical activity meaningful to you? Now we'll cover that more in part one of this lesson, but this is part two where we do more of the exercises. Also, in part one, we're gonna cover what would happen or how do you feel, what would happen if, if you were to say throw something out of your window if you lived in a, a fifth floor apartment, right? What would your actions, what would be the consequence of your actions, okay? Because I know sometimes in our schoolyard people throw things out the windows. So I wanted you to think about what would happen if you were the person that threw that. Because that's, your actions could cause something. Uh, also, what did you learn today? Did you learn maybe how to swing the rope better? Did you like learning the new jump roping uh, trick that I'll show you? We'll call it a trick uh, or style, however we want to call it. So those are some things I'd like you to try to tell me what you learned today. Maybe we'll put that in the Flipgrid question or not. I'm not sure yet. But you just think about something you may have learned. Oh, yes, I learned the new jump roping. I can do something better. So we're going to start jogging in place. Now I'm gonna make this a little quicker because the, our part twos have been pretty long. So you do it for about one minute, then you're gonna go fast, you go slow, you go fast, you go slow, okay? You have to jog, I would say jog in place for five minutes and go fast, slow, fast, slow, warm your body up. Where you warm your body up and then you do some stretches and then you can jog in place again for five minutes. So that's gonna be up to you, all right? I don't wanna do it all this lesson because then it takes too long. All right, then you do your stretches, all right? We stretch down low, we stretch up high, we stretch down low, out below. These are all stretches you've done with me before, right? We like to warm our body up before we do our exercises, all right? I'm just doing this real quick because you know what I like to do. So I don't want to continue doing it too long because then the video, the last three have been like 20 minutes and that's a long time. You do the stretches that you can do to keep your body warm, okay? I like to just do a couple here, all right? Now, our rag doll, okay? Uh, the reason I'm showing you rag doll is we're gonna do two yoga poses, and one of them is called sandwich. And I'm gonna go down on the ground, and sandwich is like rag doll, except I'm sitting, okay? My feet are together, all right? And I'm gonna slide as far as I can. So if I was standing, my feet would be almost to the ground here. Okay, so I hold it, I try to keep my back straight as best as I can. If I can touch my toes here, maybe I wanna go a little lower and try to I'll hold the bottom of my feet, or go to my heels, I should say, and you try to go. And if you can go further, go further, and you try to keep your back straight. Okay, so that's how it looks sideways. This is how it would look forward, right? I just touch my toes, I try to keep my back straight, and if I could do that, then if I want to go a little further, I could try going further. Again, I try to keep my back straight, but it, eventually it might have to bend a little bit, okay? So that's called sandwich pose. Again, all these yoga poses are in the, uh, we've done them in Google Classroom, I gave you the choice board, and they're in Mr. Bosch's webpage, that's in the ps205x.org. If you look up teacher sites, you'll see a lot of these exercises. The next yoga pose we're gonna do is called a snake pose. Again, when I do snake pose, right, I'm just gonna start on my hands and knees, but then I'm just gonna go down and my hands are like around the side of my body. And I just kind of look, and I'm not bending my head, and I'm gonna show you sideways, and this is front ways. So this is how I would do it front ways, okay? And then when I do it sideways, okay? All right, my, my legs will be on the ground, I'm just gonna arch my back up, okay? I don't wanna move my head. I'm gonna try to keep my head with my back. And maybe bring my hips closer to the ground. Okay, that gets a good stretch in my back. 
right so those are the yoga poses now just for a review we talked about our chest muscles last at uh, last video and those are called pectoral muscles okay and your chest muscles our pectoral muscles help our arms and our shoulders our deltoids right deltoids biceps triceps it helps them move all right so these chest muscles help this part of my body do their motion okay that's the simplest way for me to tell you all right so now i showed you a couple of uh, chest exercises on the choice board I'm going to show you three today in this video I was going to show you four but I'm going to show you three one is our push-up okay so for a push-up again my hands will be on the ground underneath my shoulders I bring my feet out bring my knees up now there's different ways of doing it and if you look at the choice board you'll see the different ways okay and then I'm going to go down up, try not to touch the ground. And down and up. I want to keep my body straight as a board. Sideways. All right. Hands, my feet are out, my knees go up, my body is straight. I look down on the ground between my hands and I go down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, those are our push ups. Okay. Those help our deltoid muscles and our chest muscles. Uh, or the next one I'm going to show you, or is a, uh, since I'm on the ground, a dumbbell pullover. Now, I'm going to bring my head towards you to show you, and I'll show you the sideways also. It's going to, a dumbbell, remember, it's something that will, it's a, a weight. You can use a water bottle, soup can, vegetable can, or a dumbbell is something that is like when you go to the gym, it has the weights. So I'm gonna bring my head to you, and I'll use my glasses just to show you. All right, now I'm on the ground, and I bring them here, and I come up. I try to keep my arms the same way. I'm not gonna move my arms. I keep them a little bit of a bend, and I come up, and I go down, up, and down okay so that's one way now I'll show you sideways okay so I'm here my arms are bent a little bit and it goes over my head and up and over my head up okay I try to keep my arms the same way those are dumbbell pullovers, and I give you more of an explanation in the choice board. Now I'm going to stand up, and I'll show you one more exercise for our chest, and then we'll do the jump ropes. We'll do a quick review, and then three new ones. So the next exercise for our chest are called dumbbell, let me just make sure I say it right, uh, plate push-out. I'm sorry, plate push-out. So we would basically we would have a plate or something in my hand, and it's just I'm gonna push it out, bring it back in, push it out, bring it back in. All right, so my fingers are pointing out, and I push out, bring it back in, and I'll push. If I'm pushing, I'm using my chest muscles more. I'm not just gonna hold my hands and go like this. I want to push, and that works my chest muscles more. Okay. Again, when you do the exercises with weights or anything, soup cans in your hand, do, do it six times and take a break and do it six times and take a break and do it six times. That means it's three sets of six repetitions. That means three times six. You would do 18 altogether. That's our exercises for our chest muscles. Now let's review some of our jump rope and I'm sorry I'm talking maybe a little quick but I don't want a long video all right remember we want to make a good jump rope size so my foot's in the middle this would not be how I want to do it I want to line up my handles if it goes up to my shoulder that's a good length if it goes below my chest it's probably too short and it would be more difficult if it goes over my head 
all I would need to do is wrap it around my hand and that makes it short. Okay. Holding the jump rope, right? These are the ends of the handles. Let's put those on my body. Your palm has to be up. Your thumb goes on top and I hold it on my fingertips. All right, so the ends go on my body, palms up on my fingertips with the thumb on top. Okay, that's how I would hold it. And I'm not gonna crush it. I'm not holding it tight. I want it in my fingers so it doesn't fall out of my hand. Okay, now when I swing the rope, I want to have my hands out to the side, almost straight, but I don't want my elbows. I want a little bend in my arms and it's to the side of my body. And I'm gonna to try to keep it there. And I'm gonna swing it over. All right, when I do that, and my hands are wide like this, I have a wide open door and it's easier to go through. If I try to start like this, I gotta really, it, 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 it whips. So I want you to try to get used to my hands to your side and swing like that. Again, safety, make sure there's no one behind you, make there's, sure there's nothing behind you to get hit or broken or in front of you. I don't want you jump roping inside. I don't want you to break anything inside. Okay, All right, so I have my swing. Sometimes I use my arms to start. Okay, and then I step over. You do your set shadow jumping if you need to, right? Okay, and then if you need to, all right, I jump, we'll practice up and down like this. I'm not bringing my knees up and down, all right? I'm not going, I'm doing a little, almost like a skip. And then it's, all right? You get used to the rhythm. I try to keep my body straight, I try to look forward. If I look down, I sometimes will bring my hands in front, which makes my door narrow and it makes it harder to go through. That's why I like my hands to my side and my body up straight. It keeps my hands here and my door open, wide open. Okay, so our two foot bounce, right? I'm just doing two feet. And if you need to, take some time to practice that. Now we're gonna do the one foot bounce and there's two ways you can try it. One would be to just start on one foot I'm gonna swing it, right? I start on one foot, and as I come over, I'm just gonna, okay? So you practice one foot. I have a harder time on this one foot, my leg, because this is my bad leg, but I'll try. All right, so that's one way to start. Just go on one foot, pick your other foot up, keep your hands out to the side, okay? I want my hands out to the side as much as possible. Another way to do it is you can start with your two foot pounds and then just go with pick your one foot. If you want, switch feet. So you can do your one foot bounce that way. Okay? So I would like you to practice your one foot bounce now. Uh, I don't know, practice five minutes. Try to take your time, practice one foot. I'm not going to wait five minutes. I'm going to show you the next one. Okay? The next one is called a side straddle, okay? So, I haven't done this one in a while, so I'm gonna have my hands here. I do a jump in, jump out. Not that far out. So I'm gonna have out, in, 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 okay? So I'm doing the jump. I don't wanna go too far out because then it gets caught in the rope. That's what happened the first time I did it. So I just did it out, in, out, in, out, in. If I do it sideways, out, in, out, in, out, in. So I'm not really doing much. So if I try to time it, right? In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. In. So that is a side straddle. A little more difficult now. Now it's going to be a little more concentration. You might have to make more adjustments with your feet. Take your time. The most important thing is your swing. 
if I keep my swing steady, right? If my hands stay to the side the whole time and I make good swings, I'll know when to jump. It's very important to have that timing. Practice some side straddles. Again, take five minutes, 10 minutes, however you like. See which one you like better. Catch my breath for a second. And then we'll do our last one. The last one is called skier jump. And a skier jump, let me just double check, is my feet stay together and I just jump one side, other side, one side, other side. Sideways, it's one side, other side, one side, other side. Okay? Again, my hands are to my side. And I'm just going to start like this. One side, this 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 side. Okay? You might have to make some adjustments with your hands for the rope. You'll have to see that as you go. Let me try that again and see if I make adjustments. Okay? One side, this side, this side, one side, this side. So I do move my hands over a little bit. I'm not swinging them over, but just a little bit. And you get used to swinging them, not swinging them, but adjusting them a little bit. It's gonna be important later on, because we're gonna do a jump where we have to move our hands even more. Okay, so skiers, you might just have to move your hands a little bit, and you jump back and forth. Take your time, practice those skiers now. I'm gonna check my notes here to see what's next, and we're just about done. All right, so, all right, we're practicing. Thank you for practicing. Maybe you could tell me what you like best, which one you like best, all right? And remember, I would like you to think about, you don't have to tell me, but think about what you learned today. What jumps were good? Did you learn a new exercise for your chest muscles? Do, what about the yoga poses? Maybe, you know, you could tell me some of those. Uh, why is physical activity meaningful? And again, what would happen if you, your action, what would be the consequence if you threw something out of a window if you lived on the fifth floor? That's just a question. There could be other things, but I will talk about that in part one. Okay, thank you for joining me in, in jump rope number two. Bye-bye.